WISC-TV now presents For the Record. The Simpson Street Free Press turned 25 this year, and we will tell you what that means next on For the Record. Thanks for joining us. I'm Neil Heinen. The Simpson Street Free Press has, since day one, first and foremost, been about academic achievement. It's how the community-based after-school program accomplishes that achievement that makes it so special and so successful. Here to talk about a quarter century of never turning in your first draft, our Simpson Street Free Press senior editor Taylor Kilgore, assistant editor Jacqueline Zuniga Paz, and teen editor Layla Fletcher. And thank you all very much for coming on. Thank you so much. Since they thank can't you. see the back of your shirts, they don't know that never turn in your first draft <laughs> yeah. is in the back. And yet, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that saying a little bit later because it really captures a lot about the free press. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. But Taylor, just um, you've been doing this a long time now. Maybe it's best to just start by explaining for those people who might not know. What is the Simpson Street Free Press? Yeah, so Simpson Street Free Press is a project-based model uh, after-school program where um, students all across Dane County are employed, so third through um, seniors in high school are employed mm -hmm. to our various publications, and so they write in Spanish and English uh, articles for our publications, and they get paid for it. It's a job for them. Uh, they really have a lot of opportunities for close reading dosages, and it's really an extended school day model approach where we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one work with students so that they can really, you know, uh, work on their literacy skills. This may be a little backwards because mm -hmm. I think the academic achievement comes first, but the, the product is a very professional journalism product. Right. Now, how mm -hmm. many print um, editions do you do a year? So we don't... Not as many as you used yeah, to. Yeah, we don't do as many as we used yep. to. We publish almost every day online yep. on SimpsonStreetFreePress.org and so we publish online and we kind of had to make the decision to, uh, you know, hire more students or, you know, publish regularly. It, it costs a lot to publish a hard copy even though everybody loves it. Um, so we, um, at some point we made a decision to hire more students and we continue to have huge wait lists for all of our uh, publications and yeah. so um, we have been primarily uh, publishing online, but we just uh, published our latest hard copy about two weeks ago. Right, and it's <laughs> it's just it's a great copy, and you can still find it in various locations around the city. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have it in libraries, schools. Uh, we have a bunch at our Southtown kind of anchor location, so um, anyone can come by and pick it up there as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do you both work at the Simpson Street site? Yeah. Not not at one of the other satellite sites. So just explain, Jackie. What do you do there? Um, well, I'm an assistant team editor, so I work with students um, with their writing in both English and Spanish. Um, so I just sit down with them and I have one-on-one -on -one conferences with these students. Um, and that's basically just the main role that I have at Simpson Street. Uh, how, how many how many students are there currently? Do you, there, know, do you have a number? Yeah, so there's about a little over 200 students. So we've grown over all of the plat all, over, all the locations. Yep, yeah, all, of, yep. all, all over the uh, publications and locations. And we also have book clubs, so that includes the students who participate in book clubs. Too. And what does a teen editor do, Leo? Well, as a teen editor, I also have my own stories that I'm working on. But alongside that, I have more responsibility around the newsroom. And I edit with the younger children and help them with whatever they need help with along their writing process. We probably have video of this somewhere. Well, there, there are a couple of pictures. But it's um, my experience has been, particularly at Simpson Street, that it has the feel of a working newsroom. I mean, you go in there after school, and there are dozens of young people adult volunteers, right, who, who come in and work, and it's all about researching, writing, editing. I mean, do you, do you get the sense, I mean, do people feel like th it's a professional environment? Yes, definitely. Yeah. We're always told that this is an actual job and you have to take it seriously, and people do, because when we come in, we go straight to our work and we start writing or researching and reading our sources, taking notes and close reading. And so there's really this professional air in the newsroom. Yeah, mm -hmm. business cards still, right? Oh, yeah. And, business cards. And, and, All the students and have and to paychecks. have business cards yeah. and they get paid for their work. Uh, so, you know, once they kind of go through the process, writing process, and they and uh, have their end result and get published, then they're up paid for their work. And so to see that um, is amazing for the students. Just as an example, Layla, how did you hear about it? How did you get involved initially? Well, I was 
I'm a ho I was homeschooled okay. before high school, yeah. and so I was part of this writing club, this homeschooled writing club, and we were meeting at the Sequoia Library, and I saw a copy of the Simpson Street Free uh -huh. Press, and I picked it up and went home and read it, and I thought it was really interesting. So I looked it up online and found the website, and there I saw Apply Now. So I clicked on it and filled out an application, and uh, I told my mom I applied for a job, and <laughs> yeah. here I am now. All right. I, I, that's an interesting story that I hadn't heard before, someone learning about it that way. Uh, do you remember how you learned about it, Jackie? Yeah, of course. So um, I was actually in, I think, my seventh grade, no, my eighth grade English class when two staff members from Simpson Street came in and they talked about this opportunity, you know, of writing and getting paid for it. Um, and I was just compiled, like, completely entranced by the, like, idea that, you know, I applied, I went in for the interview, um, and I started working, and I was just really excited. Um, got to meet a bunch of different people from a bunch of different backgrounds, and I've been there ever since. What's a, what's an interview like, Taylor? <laughs> I mean, when when someone like 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 Jackie or Layla comes in, what are you looking for in a sure. young person? Um, well, we really use the interview as a way to you know draw them in and really get them connected, and that this is a job and that it's important, and that you are going to be doing important work here. And so you know, I ask them kind of the typical job interview-ish questions, um, you know, why do you want, why did you apply to Simpson Street Free Press? Um, what do you want to learn um, in the program? Uh, what kind of skills can you bring? So it's not necessarily about uh, what can the student bring for us at all, but, you know, we want them to get an opportunity to go through this uh, kind of interview process and have those skills kind of off the back so that they can really that's how they really buy in to the paper too. Do you ever have to mm -hmm. tell a young person maybe this isn't the right time you know maybe this isn't the right fit for your life right now try it again later? Um, I don't think that happens very regularly. Okay, um, interesting. We, yeah, so for the most part, once they get to the interview process, um, we sit down and we kind of have a meeting with the uh, parents as well. Mm -hmm. And so we form this partnership with the parents so that we talk about, you know, checking school grades and we check Infinite Campus and we can check grades, school day attendance, and uh, we collect MAP reading scores. So we kind of have this partnership with parents and students so that um, it, you know, works out so that you know, everybody involved can kind of help that student grow through the program. Yeah, you know, I would think though that at times then that would put a lot of responsibility on you on you two to help these younger students who may have one idea of what it's gonna be like going into it <laughs> and then faced with the reality of it to help them through that process. Yeah. Have you done have you been through that? Yeah, of course. I've worked with students who have like started writing out their articles, you know, they, they struggle at first with the process. Um, and we usually give um, like first time students like easy sources, um, maybe history or animals, and we just walk them through the entire process, um, just guiding them through, you know, the, the writing, the paragraph building, the editing, all the changes. Eventually they get used to the process and it's really this editing and close reading process that's really essential um, to our entire curriculum because that's the type of skill that they're able to later translate into the classroom environment. People really should go online to get a sense of what the paper's like and what's mm -hmm. in it. But it is a strong emphasis on science and, um, you know, a little bit of world geography. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, so we use this, so we have a, um, like I said, extended school day model and, you know, students are working across the curriculum. So this means that um, our sections are science, history, geography, um, energy and environment. So students are really, you know, using things that they might encounter during the school day at some point. And so we kind of entice students with science is a really big one. Um, so um, Wisconsin, Science of Wisconsin's Environment is actually um, kind of one of our projects for a 25th year long uh, project. And um, we've kind of already started it where um, students can really dive into science topics or environmental um, issues in Wisconsin and write about it and get excited. You know, I want to talk more about the topics that are in there and about how this how this relates to achievement in school. And we're going to do that when we come back right after this.
The Simpson Street Free Press is 25 years old, which I have to admit is a little hard for me to get my head around. <laughs> uh, being there at the beginning with my friend Jim Kramer, who is uh, is still connected to the program. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> Perhaps the, the the Godfather figure of, of the Simpson Street Free Press. But joining me to talk about the last 25 years and looking ahead, Taylor Kilgore, who is a senior editor at the Simpson Street Free Press. Jackie Zuniga Pies, who is the uh, uh, assistant editor, and Layla Fletcher, who is the teen editor. So this idea that um, I've always really liked, Taylor, that everyone on the staff is very comfortable talking about the connection between the work, the journalism, the, the, the publication, the online work, and this idea of, of achievement. Mm -hmm. And even t specifically closing the achievement gap right. for, for, for young people who participate. And it's this idea of academic rigor, right? Mm -hmm. That's just right. that's just woven yeah. into it. But how does it how does that show itself in, in 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 any one of the sites at Simpson Street, the young people recognizing that this is something that's really going to impact their their schoolwork? Right. Um, you guys can jump into um, when I talk about this. But so with Simpson Street Free Press, when students um, come in, we um, you know they're working on their articles. They're doing a lot of close reading and sitting one on one with really credentialed volunteers, um, published authors, retired journalists, and they get to sit one on one and do various forms of close reading. Uh, research says that you know literacy in um, out of school time is very important in closing the achievement gap mm -hmm. and you know working on close reading dosages we have about so we track um, close reading <coughs> um, our data and so we have about 13 different ways or 17 different ways that students can really do different close reading strategies and so close reading is really reading for a purpose rolling your sleeves up sitting down with the editor and um, going at the sentence and paragraph level and really uh, you know diving into either words you don't understand or concepts that need to be fleshed out things like that and then you know working through a process with someone and then getting praise for you know your first draft or you know working on your uh, multiple revisions and um, it's a really it kind of translates to the school day when they go in to school they're a lot more confident um, I know when I was at school there's just not enough time for teachers to be able to sit down with students um, for 20 minutes and do close reading strategies with each student and so um, that didn't happen for me really at all um, when I was in school and so you know I was able to practice my writing um, at Simpson Street Free Press uh, when I was in eighth grade or middle school and high school and really get that um, opportunity to do that. Is it fair to say Taylor that that none of the young people who come into the Simpson Street Free Press know what close reading is? Yeah, I, mm -hmm. it's spe that's specific to the Simpson Street Free Press model. Yes, it's definitely specific to the Simpson Street Free Press model. It's something that really can be done only in out of school time. Um, that's really the power of out of school time because uh, teachers aren't able uh, to do that one-on-one uh. -on -one with their students. There's just not enough time during the school day. So absolutely, most students do not know close reading um, when they first walk into the door. But uh, you know, when they are at Simpson Street Free Press, they know the word very well. So are you both? <laughs> looking for that as you're working with your with your students that you would say to them uh, you need to do this close reading work yeah of course whenever I'm working with a student it's always very important to make sure that they're getting a hang of the process of close reading which is really just a valuable skill to recognize and learn um, especially as you're going on to higher academia um, because when you're reading, you always need to, you know, understand the main concept of what you're reading, understand any words you don't, maybe understand at the beginning, you know, get the entire either underlying message or if it's conveyed like really clearly in the beginning. Um, just understanding all those parts is really important um, for a student. So Layla, do so then these young people take this back to their schools or to their homes if, if they're being homeschooled and they can apply them in ways that they wouldn't necessarily apply them? Yeah, because the close reading is really focusing on understanding what you're reading and so when you get into the habit of close reading you can really delve deeper into whatever you're reading whether that be for school or just for fun and so when you have that in your blood basically uh, <laughs> it's a lot easier to understand what you're reading and then be able to write more coherently and 
with better formatting too. Yeah, and Layla, yeah, as a um, high school student or any of the high school students that are working with um, middle school students or elementary students, we have them kind of edit together and do kind of a peer-to-peer -peer edit. And in that case, both of them are getting the close reading dosages that they'll need. So. So when you hear the conversation, the civic conversation around the achievement gap, and it's so important and it's so much a part of, of, of what we're focused on in this community, do you, do you think there are skills here that could help every single student be more successful? Yeah, because if everyone had the opportunity to be interested and know what they're reading about, I think that it would be a lot easier for many students in schools too to be able to focus more on their schoolwork and be more interested in it too. So the interest could help bridge the achievement gap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We, so we collect uh, MAP reading scores and so when a student um, spends sequential semesters at Simpson Street Free Press, those reading scores skyrocket and you know they skyrocket to a point where it's at or above grade level. And so when students get the opportunity to do this, the, you know their MAP scores and their um, school grades are going to increase. You know we talked with um, Jennifer Cheatham um, not too long ago about you know working with the school district and um, helping them kind of get the their map scores um, up well um, when we come back let's talk a little bit about what the next 25 years might hold for the Simpson Street Free Press and I want to get all of your opinions on that we'll do that right after this and I would My guests are three editors from the Simpson Street Free Press, which this year celebrates its 25th anniversary. Taylor Kilgore is senior editor at the Simpson Street Free Press. Jackie Zuniga Pies is uh, uh, assistant editor, and Layla Fletcher is uh, teen editor there. And uh, there were, I, I, I looked back a little bit, Taylor, at some of the 25th anniversary programs that mm -hmm. this is from earlier in the year that. Um, you we're going to emphasize over the course of the year. How's that gone? Yeah, so it's going great. We've already started emphasizing a lot of our projects that we plan to do throughout um, the year of 2018. And so um, one of those includes, we call it Rock Your Reading Score. So that kind of has to do with uh, measuring map reading scores and Badger exams. So we will be measuring five um, students from five different schools and really honing in on, you know, the sequential semesters at Simpson Street Free Press. So we can kind of uh, monitor and measure those jumps in the reading scores. Uh, we are we started a new publication called Wisconsin Free Press and so uh, students all over Wisconsin contribute to the publication and write about the cool things mosaics and museums and things around Wisconsin and then also the science of Wisconsin's environment which is um, kind of something I mentioned earlier but students are able to contribute um, through this and kind of look at the natural resources and ecosystems in Wisconsin. We've worked with the Dane County Land and Water Resource Department where a handful of our students interned with them and they were able to uh, interview conservationists and uh, go out uh, with the team there and uh, write really great pieces about um, our natural resources. So I was saying earlier, every time I wear my Simpson Street Free Press t-shirt, somebody inevitably says, I love that saying on the back. Mm -hmm. Never hand in, hand in your first draft. Um, but it, it has some significance. And so how do you explain that to, to the students? What, what, what that means? Um, well, handing in your first draft, you know, just means as it is, you know, never handing in your first draft, always really looking to improve in your writing, whether that's working with another person or working with a peer. Um, so, you know, working together, lifting each other up, um, I think that's just the underlying meaning of just like never heading in your first draft. And that's really what we get to do in our small community here at Simpson Street Free Press, you know, um, just working with each other, um, working on writing, working on reading, working on communication, um, and just helping each other just um, lift each other up. I've always enjoyed it because in professional journalism, it's never hand in your first or your second or your third or your no. fourth or your fifth. I mean, right. there's you just keep at it yeah. and, until you get it right. But for young people who might think, okay, I nailed this. Here it is. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. To be able to say to them, Layla, uh, no. <laughs> it's not that easy. No. Yeah. Uh, it, 
It's important to help the students polish their work and see how to improve their work too. Um, one of the things about the Simpsons Refresh Press I've always liked is it just it invites people who have been there for a while to stay, you know, and to continue mm -hmm. to work with young people. Can you see yourself being there for a while? How would you, you know, what would you say about the future of the of the Free Press? Well, I can definitely see myself staying with the Free Press uh -huh. for a while. Uh, since I started as a student writer, I have now been promoted to teen editor, and there's really like a way that you can go through kind of the hierarchy. So after becoming a teen editor, when I go to college, I can become a staff editor, and I can stay on after that maybe too. Any, any interest in pursuing this line of work, Jackie? Um, I'm considering journalism at okay. the time. Um, <laughs> I'm going to UW Madison, but I definitely am still going to be working with Simpson Street in the years to come. Um, I can definitely see Simpson Street growing, um, especially in the multilingual department. We yeah. do have La Prensa and Senate Free Press, which are just our two publications who have students who are writing in um, different languages. Uh, so I can definitely not see just that Spanish, sector. not just Spanish. Uh -huh. um, is, is there a Hmong component to it? Or? Um, Mandarin, oh, Mandarin is Mandarin. a component. Thank you. Um, German as well. Uh -huh. uh, so having students okay. just write across languages. Um, and seeing that grow is something I expect to see. Mm -hmm. We've got a minute a minute left, Taylor. There's an open house coming up yep. that people are invited to. Yeah, exactly. So we have an open house. Our next one is at uh, January 11th from 5 to 7 at our uh, anchor location in Southtown Mall. So uh, that'll be awesome if people can come out and support and kind of see our students in action and see where the magic happens. So. And you are graduating from the university? Yes, I am graduating and I'm really excited about that. Uh, um, it's, yeah, I, I don't know, it's been a while. I'm graduating with a degree in journalism, uh, and so Simpson Street Free Press has really, if anything, prepared me for college, and you know, whether you're gonna go through a four-year track or anything like that, you need those college-ready skills. How long have you I, been there, Taylor? Mm -hmm. yeah. I've been at Seems Simpson, like you've been there forever. Yeah, I've been at Simpson Street Free Press since I was in eighth grade, and yeah. now I'm graduating from college at UW-Madison. Well, congratulations, <laughs> and congratulations to all of you. You're all part of the 25th anniversary. Thanks yeah. for doing this. Oh, We're gonna thanks. come back and wrap up for the record right after this. My thanks to the editors of the Simpson Street Free Press and you for joining us. We'll see you next week on For the Record.